Ladies and gentlemen, the creator of the Hayden Super System Central Vacuum, Mr. Ted Hayden. Hello, and thank you for purchasing my new Super System. I would like to take this opportunity to show you how to make the most of your Super System by familiarizing you with all of its features, to show you how to care for Super System so it'll last you the lifetime of your home, and more importantly, how Super System will actually improve you and your loved one's health. In my home, I share in the vacuuming, and I've come up with methods that make vacuuming easier. There's two reasons to vacuum. One is to extend the life of your carpets and furnishings, and the other is to make your home a healthier place to be. This video shows how SuperVac can help you improve the healthiness of your home. Ted will show the best ways to vacuum and how to care for your SuperVac so it'll last as long as your home. And at the end, Ted shows how to install the SuperVac power unit with a super valve. But let's begin with a few facts about health. We have an air quality problem. The air we breathe is contaminated with chemicals and microscopic organisms. Every day, dozens of people die from ailments caused or aggravated by air pollution. But our closest air problem isn't with cars or industry, it isn't even outdoors. The real threat is in our homes. Our homes, according to the Environmental Protection Agency, harbor chemical hazards at concentrations 10 times or even 40 times higher than outdoors. Because we've sealed our homes to save energy, we've sealed in harmful pollutants, so chemicals collect. Like the radon gas that seeps up through the basements of homes in many parts of the country. Sidestream cigarette smoke lingers much longer in the indoor air. Household cleaners evaporate, releasing noxious fumes. Mold spores explode, flooding the atmosphere. And laminated wood and synthetic carpeting emit chemicals. We read of one case in which mice in one home died from these fumes. Indoor air pollutants are being recognized as suspect in more and more ailments. And in many cases, when we get a cough or sneezes or the sniffles, and we think we have the flu, in fact, we're having a reaction to an indoor contaminant. And as our homes fill up with particles and chemicals, our forced air heating carries them throughout our homes, spreading them to rooms that would otherwise be less contaminated. For every breath we take outside, we take nine or ten indoors. We spend our lives breathing in our buildings and homes, and the consequences are scary. Fifty million people across North America are confirmed allergy sufferers. Asthma, the most identifiable allergy-based illness, is now epidemic. In Canada, where statistics are more detailed, ten people a week die of asthma. And the death rate among young adults is up 163% in the years that indoor air quality has declined. Canada's premier news magazine, noting that more adults are dying from asthma, called the increase dramatic. People's allergy tolerance is as individual as our immune system. Picture your allergy tolerance as a bucket. Your body absorbs allergens till your bucket's full, then you suffer allergy symptoms. So the person with the lower capacity suffers sooner and more. Individual capacity can vary too. Capacity grows as our immune system matures. Capacity drops as we're exposed to an onslaught of allergens. Reduce allergens enough, your immune system can rebound and your capacity grows again. A child today runs a high risk, close to one chance in two, of contracting allergies. And the evidence is his surroundings largely decide the risk. Even if a child's parents suffer asthma, the child's risk of asthma falls by two-thirds if the asthma hazards around him are removed. As the leading U.S. magazine Prevention noted, childhood asthma can be stopped. For the first time, there's hope of preventing the unpreventable. It, too, recommends a program of avoiding suspected allergens. How many children have allergies? In one study of asthma, doctors looked at 270 children in seven schools, all at the age of nine years. They found 22%, almost one child in four, had been diagnosed as having developed asthma. Then they diagnosed a further 15% of children in the course of the study. That's 37% of children who, at the age of nine, already had asthma. 
and that was only asthma, not the far broader range of other allergies. You probably know someone who's allergic to some house pets, but you may not be aware of how profoundly pets contribute to allergies. Virtually every pet, every day, sheds dander, particles of dead skin. All animals and all humans naturally shed their outer layers of skin. This is only a problem because the dander falls to your floor to become food for the most common allergy threat you're likely to face. Here is a special collector with a new filter that will capture the products of vacuum cleaning before they're carried away to the central vac power unit. We're about to vacuum a pillow from a very typical home. Watch the dust material as it pours into the collector. This level of accumulation in mattresses and pillows is very, very common. What is being collected is not primarily cloth particles or lint, so much as it is human skin, dander, that will feed the house dust mite. Mites are microscopic bugs. Dozens or hundreds will fit in the head of a pin. They thrive in dark, moist places, carpets, drapes, and upholstery. They are in the dust that can accumulate around almost every home. Mites make house dust the most threatening allergen that most people will encounter. They reproduce quickly, 20 to 50 eggs at a time. There's a new generation every three weeks. Their sticky waste pellets cling to drapes and furniture and clothing. Mites make dust dangerous. But you can control mites and dust and allergens, and that is the purpose of this video. Now some of the best ways to use your new super system to remove house dust and allergens from your home. As Ted lays out the system components, you'll notice two different wands, an upper wand and a lower wand with a power cord attached. Place the upper wand into the lower wand until the button lock fits into the slot. Now click the power cord into its clasp at the center. Fit the mail connection end tab up into the cord shield. And you can now take the wand assembly and insert it into the power nozzle. When the lever clicks up, it's engaged. Your attachments come with a tool caddy which clicks into place on the wand. Ted finds it most convenient to have the crevice tool facing downward with the shorter dusting and upholstery tools on the two upper posts. Your hose hanger is designed to mount approximately four feet from the floor to allow four loops in your hose. It has rounded edges to prevent premature hose wear. You mount it to just one stud with two screws. It's also designed to store the Hayden floor and wall brush. When taking the hose out, just slip one hand under the hose and the other will be free to carry the power nozzle. Our hose hangers are strong and durable. You may want to get extras to hold garden hoses or electrical cords. Here's Ted's technique getting ready to vacuum. He'll place the power nozzle on the floor and drop the hose, but he hangs onto the wall end of the hose. Now he's ready to walk back to the inlet valve. Open the valve and you see how the household current plugs in with the hose. Now walk back to the power nozzle and pick up the hose. Turn the hose to take out any loops. You want it to lay flat with no overlap. Again, see how the contacts for household current work easily together. Touch your toe to the handle release, push the thumb switch forward, and you're vacuuming. Pine needles are hard to clean, but Super System can do it. But there's a right way and some wrong ways. Can you guess what's wrong with what Ted's doing here? Well, he's going too fast, too little time to get the power head agitation working. He was putting pressure on wands in the nozzle, which cuts off airflow, reduces cleaning, and adds undue wear to both nozzle and carpet. And bending over like that creates strain. One great secret of the Hayden Super System is how comfortable it is. Let the power nozzle find its own speed. No need to push. It'll feel as if it's floating. Vacuuming is almost effortless. You stand direct because of the orthopedic handle. Your arm only guides the nozzle. As for your carpet, you want to agitate the dirt out, and the nozzle does a great job of agitation with just a little time. The best way is back and forth, slowly, over each part of the carpet. And this way, you only need one pass, back and forth, over each section of carpet. Slow your strokes, and the job actually goes faster.
Sometimes you'll be vacuuming, and when you change floor surface to a plusher carpet, you'll hear the nozzle working harder. What's happening is what we call lip lock. Suction is drawing the nozzle into the carpet, locking the nozzle lip and stifling airflow. With a simple toe touch, we increase nozzle height by one position. You have a total of four height adjustment positions to choose from. This breaks the suction lock on the nozzle lip and sustains the flow of air. Here's where you're going to appreciate having the tools handy on the wand and how useful the wands become with super latch. Ted just loves his new super latch. It allows you to quickly change accessories almost effortlessly. Super latch gives the wands a new role as extensions for the accessories. With the crevice tool extended, Ted doesn't have to get on hands and knees. And now you easily get to the places that are just too tight for the power nozzle. It's very important to vacuum carpet edges, particularly on light colored carpets. The focus suction provides extra cleaning power. You might do this, say, once a month. Here's a quick change. Crevice tool on the caddy, pick up the dusting tool, and we're vacuuming again. Try dusting with the dusting tool. The horsehair bristles are gentle, yet they loosen dust from cracks, and dust is removed, not pushed around and kicked up as with a cloth duster. High up, Ted's going to find he has to reach to lay the dusting tool at the angle he needs. So instead, he swivels the tool, and he doesn't have to reach so high. Now it lays flat. The swivel function locks every 60 degrees and can be changed infinitely to the angle you're cleaning. Now it's at full right angles to clean baseboards while you stand upright. Ted doesn't need the wands now, so with super latch, he quickly replaces them in the power nozzle for later use. Back to the dusting tool again. You'll want to clean anywhere mite allergens will adhere, which is any textured surface. That could be textured wallpaper or this beautiful needlepoint. Another quick change, the upholstery tool, and this is vital in keeping your home as healthy and allergen-free as possible. Dust mites like darkness, moisture, warmth, and for food, the particles of skin we naturally shed. Skin rubs off on upholstery. Your best defense against dust mites and their wastes and eggs is regular, thorough vacuuming with a powerful central vacuum-like super system. And that should include upholstery. The same goes for drapes. Dust actually causes drapes to wear, making them discolor and smell old and moldy. Mite eggs and wastes are carried here by air currents. Don't shake or jar the curtains, or you could propel allergens back into the air again. This is a good time to get back to our dust specimen collector as we talk about cleaning the bedroom. The filter will collect what we vacuum from this one pillow. What we're collecting is mainly tiny pieces of human skin, the main food of house dust mites. From this one pillow, we collected what you see on these four filters. So to get the job done right, you'll want to strip away all the bedding and wash everything in hot water at least once a week. And when you do sheets and pillowcases, you need also to do the mattress covers and blankets. You spend a third of your life in bed. The body has seven layers of skin and the outer layer is constantly being shed. This means the highest concentration of skin particles is in your bed. It's natural to shed. Everyone's bed contains skin particles like this. Use your power nozzle because the agitation and vibration will get down into the mattress and loosen much deeper than suction alone. Your bed is a feast area for mites, but nowhere more so than in your pillow. They lay their eggs here, deposit waste pellets within inches of where you breathe. Mold spores and bacteria can also thrive in your pillow. You don't want to introduce any more pollutants than necessary into your respiratory system. By all means, consider getting allergy covers. They fit over both the box spring and the mattress, and Ted recommends both. And he considers pillow covers mandatory. Many such covers will be non-breathable material that could be uncomfortable, but there are now some made of material that keeps mites in but still breathes, so it won't make you sweat as you sleep. 
You should think about vacuuming window screens regularly, too, and let some fresh air in. And keep your closet doors closed so the dust that clothes naturally collect will have less chance to circulate. The first year of life is critical in deciding whether a person suffers allergies throughout his lifetime. And if allergies can be prevented, this is the place to start. One recent study said clearly, if a baby isn't exposed to allergens in his first year of life, he's unlikely to develop allergies later. Dust control will allow a small child's immune system a better chance for healthy development. For once a child develops allergies, he has them for life. Dust control means rethinking the furnishings in a child's room, like avoiding textured cloth wall hangings and decorations. Allergens cannot adhere to smooth surfaces like the enameled crib and the wipeable baby bumpers and mattress cover. Those lovable plush toys should be avoided. Washable, allergy-resistant plush toys are available. Baseboard heating is good. It doesn't blow dust around like forced air does. Carpet should ideally be removed or at least treated with allergy-fighting foams or sprays. And take note, the recreational blanket should be washed with the child's other bedding and clothing. On the window, blinds are wipeable and mites cannot live on them. Again, watch for stuffed toys, but the changing table's fine and so's the hard surface dresser. Here are some guidelines for healthy home settings. Keep your house below 70 degrees. Mites have trouble reproducing below 68 or 70. Mites also don't last at below 50% humidity. We think 25 to 40% is a very good range for home humidity because the mites cannot survive. And for laundry, wash in water of at least 131 degrees. Anything above that kills mites in the laundry. Especially when you're not opening the blinds all the time, it's easy to forget what collects around windows. Insect parts are the third most troublesome biological home allergen after mite and animal dander. Need to reach up to high places? The answer may be extra wands. You can get as many as you need from your vacuum dealer. Sure makes this job simpler, doesn't it? And of course, they all come apart for storage. Stereo speakers are good dust collectors. Especially if they haven't been used for a while, they'll blow dust out when you turn them on. Vacuum the back of your TV. It'll operate cooler and more efficiently. A little care with your hose can make vacuuming easier and save painted corners. Give a short, strong pull to allow enough hose to follow you. Now here are three ways to coil your hose. First, coil it on your hand, usually the left hand if you're right-handed. The key is to give the hose a twist with each loop so each new loop will lie flat against the others. You should aim for four loops when you're finished. Or, start with the hose stretched out on the floor. Take one end and flip it so it'll form a loop over itself. Do this and you'll soon have a neat coil. Again, aim for four loops, which you can pick up in one hand, leaving the other hand free to carry the nozzle. Or bring the hose out to the hose hanger and coil it here. Slip one loop onto the hanger with the cuff end hanging toward the floor. Again, you want to end up with four even loops. Again, the key is to twist the hose with each loop so each lies flat, doesn't bulge or go into a figure eight. Choose whichever method is easiest for you. Now some ways to care for your SuperVac to keep it in top condition. Do you ever wonder what to do about all the string and carpet fiber that builds up on the brush roll? One solution is a razor or utility knife. It's okay to do this because the brush roll is wood, or you can use scissors. Then you can easily pull out the short bits and vacuum them away. Changing a bulb in the nozzle is fast and easy. Remove the wand and lower the neck. The key will be the finger pressure here to squeeze the nozzle top free of the four tabs that hold it in place. To remove the bulb, press it in and turn it a quarter turn. Same procedure, press in with the new bulb. The nozzle top just snaps back into place and you're finished. Now, here's how to change the belt in the nozzle. Again, lower the neck, squeeze the nozzle top to release the four tabs that hold it. Underneath are point form instructions you can refer to. You'll remove the two screws that hold the nozzle cover. You'll need a standard size Phillips screwdriver for this. Now you flex outward on the sides, 
tilt up from the back and the front tabs will snap free. Take a blade screwdriver and twist off the brush support on each end of the brush roll. You don't have to worry about a thousand parts all falling out. This assembly is quite simple. What you should do next is clean the brush bearings to get rid of lint and string that builds up. Now the new belt over the brush roll, then the motor shaft, then snap the bearing into place. To finish up, reconnect the tabs at the front of the nozzle first. Snap the back into place and replace those two screws. Then the nozzle top will snap back and you'll be done. In case your home does not now have super valve, you can still use super system. Open up the inlet valve end of the hose and reverse the household current connections. Be sure the male connectors do not protrude beyond the housing. You can install super valves later when it's more convenient. In the meantime, you'll be able to plug in a short household current cord for your power nozzle. It is right by the handle that hose repairs are most often required. Super hose is designed to allow authorized service centers to open up the hose handle. By removing the broken section of hose and reassembling the handle, the hose life can be substantially extended. Now here's how to change the new Hayden cartridge filter. Remove the dirt receptacle, then reach up and push up and turn the filter retaining plate a quarter turn counterclockwise. That releases the filter. When you change to a new filter, don't throw out the old one, you can reuse it. The new filter fits over its retaining post, and if you look closely, you'll see the keyway you will align the retaining plate with. Push the retaining plate up and turn clockwise. Return the dirt receptacle and reclasp, and your SuperVac is ready. Now you can vacuum the filter you just removed, and it'll be ready for reuse later. Depending on the model of your SuperVac, you may have any of our four motors. All have factory sealed bearings for longest life. Most SuperVacs now have VacTrack, so they perform best and last longest. Solid green indicates the machine has power and is ready to operate. Amber warns that motor service will be needed soon. Red says motor service is needed immediately. Anytime VacTrack flashes, you should empty the dirt canister. Then disconnect power by pulling the plug for at least 10 seconds, and that resets VacTrack again. SuperVac has two separate streams of air. One enters the top of the machine to cool the SuperVac motor with clean air. This airstream is exhausted via a different path, so carbon dust from the motor armature cannot recirculate back into the motor. The second, dirt-carrying stream of air comes in the intake pipe and is directed around the interior of SuperVac in a cyclonic pattern. Over 95% of the particles drop through the separation cone filter. Some microscopic dust remains airborne and is captured by the filter. What's left, very fine particles, gases, allergens, and toxins, are exhausted. The cone causes the separated dirt to remain at the bottom of the SuperVac dirt receptacle. Without the cone, agitated dirt would recirculate, gathering on the cartridge filter and continually clogging it. Now we'll look at our most popular accessories, like our micro-attachment kit. A special mini hose attaches to super hose and miniature tools get into all the difficult places. Our mini mate is a small, easy to use power nozzle. Its concentrated suction combined with brush roll pick up dirt that other accessories leave behind. Great in places where a full sized power nozzle would be cumbersome. And for quick cleanups, eliminate messy dust pans with vac pan. Great in kitchens, bathrooms, and laundry rooms. Now, here's how to install your new SuperVac power unit with a super valve. You'll be doing this in your garage or basement or wherever you find the vacuum lines ready for hookup. If there's just one line, it'll have low voltage wire with it. You may want to add a second line. The first brings incoming dusty air to the SuperVac power unit. The other carries outgoing air from SuperVac, exhausting gases and allergens right outside away from your home. First, you'll want to find a nearby stud. It's easier if the machine mounts to the left of the back line, so connections are handy. You'll have noticed the mounting bracket right on top in the box, and you'll need two screws to mount with. SuperVac conveniently mounts to just one stud. 
After driving one screw, be sure you make the bracket perfectly vertical so your SuperVac won't look crooked on the wall. Keep track of your owner's manual and be sure to send in your warranty card. The SuperVac is in two parts and you'll want the shorter top part first. It's heavier because it has the motor in it. Notice the hook at the top, which just sits over the mounting bracket. Now take out the lower part of SuperVac. You'll notice the separator cone lifts out, and when you drop it, it centers itself again. The lower part is the dirt receptacle, which just clicks onto the top. A quick explanation of what you see on SuperVac. The lower pipe is the intake for dusty air, the upper is exhaust. On the other side, the reset button, the low voltage connections we'll get to in a minute, and vac track. Now to connect vac lines, start by measuring. We've inserted a short length and we'll mark for the sweep 90 elbow we'll use. We're marking this where the pipe will come to in the elbow hub. The next step is to cut the pipe to size. A regular hacksaw will do the job just fine. Pipe and elbows and fittings are available through your vacuum dealer. Be sure to take the edge of a chisel or paint scraper and clean off the burrs of PVC so no lint and dust will catch on the pipe when you vacuum. You should cut connections for both intake and exhaust and dry fit each into place so you know the measurements are correct before you glue them. Notice the upper pipe has a white collar. On some models, you need a coupling to attach the pipe to the motor exhaust. A coupling fits onto the pipe, then over the exhaust. Now when you glue, use a swirl around the outside of the pipe end. Glue the pipe, not the fitting. And as you snug them together, twist slightly to spread and set the glue. And work quickly, the glue sets in seconds. One caution, do not glue the pipe as it fits into your SuperVac in case you ever need to move SuperVac in future. Now the low voltage connections. Leave enough wire to connect, plus some extra. This wiring allows you to shut off SuperVac from the switch in the Hayden hose handle. When you've cut to length, strip and bare the ends, remove the low voltage connectors that come with SuperVac, and crimp the connectors onto the low voltage wire. We like to coil the extra wire to keep it neat. You can use anything round, a pencil, a broom handle, just to keep the excess out of the way. Then attach the wire to the connection points. Always put black on the right. Now you can go ahead and plug SuperVac into the nearest household outlet and the low voltage wire is neat and unobtrusive. You may also want to consider our noise reducing mufflers. The intake muffler is the same size as the vacuum pipe so there's no reduction in performance. It installs on the intake vacuum line and will reduce sound intensity by at least a half. The high frequency exhaust muffler fits here. Now's a good time to add a super valve near SuperVac for vacuuming the car upholstery or the basement carpet. First trim the side off a super valve mounting plate. Get a firm grip. Now we'll be able to gently break it off. We've taken out that short pipe and we'll add a sweep T fitting ensuring the sweep is toward the vacuum unit. Add a short piece of pipe, a coupling to bring the valve forward a bit, then the mounting plate with the electrical connection box on the top. Next, wire household current to the box to power the motors in the Hayden power nozzle and the Minimate. Now we've cut the low voltage wire here and dropped a new piece of it down and through the hole in the mounting plate fire stop. We've connected the three black wires together and the three white wires. Now to hook up super valve. You make your connections at the back of the valve. On top, the household current connects to the super valve pigtail wires, white to white, black to black. The bared ends of the low voltage wire connect to two screws, and black goes to the same side as black above. Use proper connectors and tuck the connections in the box gradually as you ease the valve in and seat the valve into the mounting plate. The valve mounts with two screws, and you're ready to plug in super hose and get cleaning. Hayden Manufacturing has pioneered central vacuum products and techniques. Hayden Super System Central Vacs can be installed in any home of any age or construction and are shipped to cleaner homes around the world. Hayden Super System. Anything else is obsolete. <laughs>